Happy, happy Friday, everyone, and uh, welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks. As we get set for the weekend, we've got no shortage of things to talk about this evening. We have kind of a tricky forecast at times this weekend. Anybody who has outdoor plans needs to pay attention to our latest thoughts here uh, in this video and on the Storm Tracker 21 app, of course, as well. And uh, it's going to be a really big uh, next 48 hours for severe weather, not necessarily here locally, but certainly across parts of the southern U.S. Before we get to today's impressive numbers, I did want to shout out and give a big thank you to everyone who chimed in with uh, pictures from last night's full lunar uh, eclipse. Uh, we got lots of great pictures from our uh, from our viewers. Uh, you know, there was some discussion on my uh, on my comment section on Facebook about how to get some of these really good pictures. It's going to take more than pointing your iPhone at the, at the moon. You're not going to get a good picture that way. A lot of times the best pictures of the moon, whether it be an eclipse or just a full moon, a regular full moon, you know, you oftentimes need a telescope uh, or at the very least a kind of a high-end camera. Usually smartphone cameras are, are not going to result in the greatest of pictures, but yeah, we got some really, really good ones of that uh, eclipse last night. You know, of course, the weather certainly cooperated last night with a crystal clear sky for much of the night. Today's numbers, very, very impressive. We overachieved in the temperature department. You know, this can happen in March when you have full sunshine and pretty dry air, and we don't have any leaf canopy yet to absorb some of the incoming solar radiation. All that radiation is going into heating the ground, which then heats the air. And so you can get these days, not only where the temperature overachieves, but you get a big diurnal range. Um, you know, we started out in the upper 20s in some places this morning. 31 official at the airport made it to 77 this afternoon, just too shy of the record set back in 1990. Andrew and I looked through the uh, record books this afternoon to try to find the biggest diurnal ranges on record for our area. And when we restrict it to just March, today is a tie with March 27th, 2016 for the biggest March diurnal temperature range, 46 degrees the difference, uh, one degree different both on the high and the low back on March 27th, 2010. But yeah, very impressive stuff. And this is just for March. When you look at the entire calendar year, um, it looks like this is probably good for second place on the biggest diurnal ranges uh, list for any date of the year. There's some wonky data um, at other times of the year that we kind of had to sift through and uh, kind of pick out where some of the data maybe a little bit bogus so but it looks like it's probably good that 46 degree difference today for second place on the list of uh, biggest diurnal temperature ranges all right we have a doozy of a storm across the middle of the country as expected our low is near the kansas nebraska border here at about uh, 7 30 in the evening severe thunderstorm watches and tornado watches out a whole slew of severe thunderstorm warnings lots and lots of polygons in through here a lot of hail producing storms a lot of wind producing storms and of course with the wind shear associated with this uh, strong area of low pressure there will be an ongoing tornado threat this evening and into tonight and then a really big day unfortunately expected for tomorrow a rare high risk level five uh, issued by the storm prediction center for parts of mississippi and alabama on saturday these level five high risks usually we see a couple or a few of these somewhere nationwide per year it's usually no more than that and you know this is a particularly to tornado prone part of the country in every year and every season almost um, and so our attention will certainly be on the south uh, during the course of the day on Saturday. Our risks continue to lower. We've been talking about this all week on Weather for Weather Geeks and the Storm Prediction Center kind of you know w went along a little bit closer to my thinking uh, today so at midday they took us out of the slight risk the level two that they introduced yesterday and bumped us back to that level one or marginal risk. And even this, I think, is is quite questionable. I would kind of extend the marginal risk to about here and not necessarily this far to the east. But nonetheless, I think it was a step in the uh, right direction because I think during the daylight hour Saturday and even overnight Saturday night, we're not likely to have severe thunderstorms. Now, there could be some strong wind gusts at times that will certainly blow things around and could cause a scattering of, of power, <laughs> pardon me, power outages. But true severe thunderstorms do not seem likely through Saturday night here locally. But nonetheless, thunderstorms are not. It's going to be windy at times, and the confidence in high winds, high enough, if you will, that the National Weather Service offices across the region did hoist some wind alerts, including wind advisories for a lot of northern and western uh, parts of Ohio, uh, wind, uh, high wind warnings out towards the Chicago metro area because of uh, what is coming. And again, this is going to be real impressive stuff when you look at the... Uh, one of the models here, uh, their kind of future rotation tracks, you know, the model's trying to predict where there might be rotating updrafts 
Uh, it's not likely to look exactly like this, of course. This is just model data, but it gives you a, a sense that late afternoon, early evening, it could be really busy in this corridor with several uh, storms trying to rotate and perhaps some long track uh, strong tornadoes in the mix as well. All of that is well off to our south, but again, we stay windy at times this weekend. It'll be just kind of a breezy Saturday, not expecting problematic winds during the day Saturday. But especially late Saturday night and early Sunday morning, with the approach of our cold front, I could see where some of us try to gust up to maybe 40, maybe even 45 miles per hour. Higher confidence in those stronger winds where that wind advisory is out in northwest Ohio. And it'll stay pretty blustery at times into the day on Sunday. Uh, until this front passes our area during the mid to late afternoon Sunday, we're going to be fair game to see some general wind gusts and also maybe a strong thunderstorm or two. Uh, you know, I talked about this some last evening and with their midday update today, the Storm Prediction Center did indeed um, kind of move back west the level one marginal risk of severe weather um, to include more of eastern Ohio and western PA. This is on Sunday. Our front, you know, it's not going to cross the area until mid-afternoon. I still think there'll be plenty of wind shear aloft and especially if some sunny breaks try to develop we'll have a modest amount of instability overhead and so the recipe is stronger I think locally on Sunday for severe weather than it will be on Saturday. So I like what they did here at midday bringing us back into a higher risk level during the daylight hours on Sunday. So here's one model depiction of how things will transpire over the weekend. We'll start out with some filtered sun Saturday morning but clouds will win the battle before the morning is through. There'll probably be a decaying line of showers that pushes through right around maybe 11 o'clock to noon might be some thunder and lightning with this, might be a gusty breeze with this, but we're not expecting any severe weather with this. And it won't last that long in any one location. I think the sun's going to try to pop out here and there in the afternoon. Now this model and a couple of other models try to bring showers back in towards early evening. This is a low confidence idea at this point. I could see where it's right, <laughs> but it's not. There isn't consensus amongst the models that there's going to be this band of showers that tries to push back in. I'm harping on this mostly because, you know, we're into mid-March now. We're not in the dead of winter. There's going to be people out and about with outdoor plans on Saturday, including some St. Patrick's Day festivities. And the forecast will be all important for people who have outdoor plans. So I'm pretty confident it'll be dry in most of the area from about 1 p.m. to about 4 p.m. After that, <laughs> it's a little bit questionable. Showers might try to push in. If they do push in, you know, they probably don't last that long. There's probably a more prolonged break for a time after sunset and then I think it's going to rain almost everywhere later Saturday night into early Sunday morning as the wind picks up. Here's the approach of our front. Again there might be a heavy thunderstorm with the approach of this front maybe right around lunchtime on Sunday and there could be some showers still lingering at times into the afternoon on Sunday and clouds will try to stick around into early Monday morning before parting for plenty of sunshine. Monday afternoon. All right, another big local event this weekend for St. Patrick's Day. It's the Mahoning Valley St. Patrick's Day Parade, which 21 WFMJ is always a proud sponsor of. And, you know, a lot of times for this parade, it snows. You know, it happens in the middle of March in northeast Ohio. Um, no snow this year, but there will be some rain showers here and there. There's no guarantee that it's going to be dry or pouring rain during the parade, but the threat is certainly elevated for at least some showers to push through, and there might even be a gusty thunderstorm in the mix as well. Even if it's not raining, a gusty wind will certainly be a factor. All right, longer range thoughts. Two cold fronts next week. One Sunday, late in the day. A cooler, more seasonable day for St. Patrick's Day, but not cold. A stronger front late in the week. I think we'll see a few snowflakes with the colder air late next week, next Thursday night into next Friday morning before the warmth tries to bounce back. These are today's long range outlooks from the Climate Prediction Center. I like what they have in the six to 10 day. The 8 to 14 day, I could see where they're not quite cool enough in the th weeks 3 and 4. I think it's going to be pretty chilly for a time compared to the average in early April. So if I were drawing the weeks 3 and 4 forecast, I would paint some blue around the Great Lakes. You know, I, I, I do think there's pretty strong odds of a, a cooler pattern settling in for a while as we open the new month of March, or of uh, April, I should say. We're still only halfway through March, but we'll talk more about the longer range, including that April forecast and the rest of spring, of course, in future editions of Weather for Weather Geeks. Stay weather aware this weekend. Stay safe. We'll keep you updated on air and online, of course. Thanks for watching tonight, and I will see you back here on Monday.